Let's take a look how you can work with dynamic data like JSON streams in Iris. So one of the first options you have is if you have a regular persistent or transient class, let's say an invoice, um, and you have to attach some dynamic data in JSON format to it, um, you can just create a property, for the sake of it, we're just going to JSON, um, that is of the type dynamic object If it starts with an object at the top level, if it is an array, um, then you can use the dynamic array property type for this. And this allows you to just take the JSON stream, assign it to this property, and then work with your invoice object and um, store it in your database, um, retrieve it, and um, when somebody needs the JSON stream, you can just retrieve that as well and serve it. Um, there is no way to directly query any subdata within your JSON stream in here. Um, this really just serves as um, a pretty plain container. If you have the need to query for certain data content inside your JSON stream, then you can use the document model for this. Um, one of the many models we support as a multi-model database. Um, this is the document model. And this is a specific class that you can create and subclass. Um, it has one specific um, property for the dynamic content, uh, which I would just call data here. Um, and you assign your JSON stream to this property. Um, let's say my JSON stream is a fairly simple one, just has an object with a name property. Um, this basically gives me a table to work with. And the table gives me an ID and obviously a data column. And this data column includes the complete JSON stream as a blob. What I can do with this specific version, um, I can create properties that refer to fields inside my JSON stream. So I can index this name field in here. And this gets calculated at runtime and extracts the value Stefan into this property name. Also, at the SQL view, this adds a name column, um, which then has the value Stefan. Um, it also creates an index on top of this, so this is indexed. which allows me to efficiently search. So this document model has a nice integration into our relational model, which allows me to query subparts of my data. Um, one nice intersection with a regular object model is that I can add properties in a regular persistent class and link this to a document. like this one. And this allows me to um, seamlessly move between the different models and access the data in very efficient ways, depending on what my current access pattern is. This flexibility is what makes a database platform truly powerful.